Developing your own complete aura is the reason you can have the same hairstyle or outfit as someone else and still be completely unique. It's what makes people remember you long after you've left the room and think about you even when you're not around. Hi ladies, welcome or welcome back to the Feminine Universe. I am so happy to have you here. Depending on who you ask, the word aura will get a lot of different opinions and definitions. For some, it's something spiritual, cosmic, and mystical. For others, it's just a potent energy that follows you around or a specific vibe you give off. But no matter how they define it, almost everyone will agree that an aura is absolutely something you can feel without a single word being said. Everyone has an aura. Some auras are a perfect fit for that person. It's that signature that they leave on a space, letting everyone know they were there. But for some people, their aura is kind of on mute or low volume because they are chasing after and trying to imitate others, or maybe because they just haven't found themselves yet. Some auras are not exactly what the person wants to give off, or it might still be a reflection of who they were years ago, but they just don't know how to change or update it. So today, we're going to dive into how to cultivate and activate your own unique aura, how to lean into what you have or create the aura you want by mastering three simple categories and finding or creating your signatures in each of these categories. So let's get started. The first category of the three is appearance. Though I do believe aura is an energy and something that you can feel, there is still a physical aspect to it. We can use the physical to affect the subconscious or non-physical. We've talked quite a bit about appearance on this channel. Usually we talk about looking good and conveying a message that says, I take care of and take pride in myself. But when it comes to aura, using your appearance is a little bit different. In this instance, we want to focus more on sending a specific message or creating a specific energy with our appearance. We've mentioned color theory and color psychology, and that's a big part of it here because every color has its own meanings and feelings that are associated with it. For a vivacious, strong, powerful, seductive aura, we could think of a color like red. For an angelic, soft, or ethereal aura, we can think about a color like white. Where for mystery, power, intimidation, or just stability, we think of a solid color like black. And of course, for a girly, playful, lighthearted, and non-threatening aura, we can think of a color like pink. Colors really have such an impact on how we feel and how we view things. Think about how it's used to make unspoken points and create subtle moods in movies and in art. And it's not just about individual colors. Groups of colors or certain color palettes are also very useful when creating an aura. Like neutrals, they're known to give off a very luxe and elevated vibe from upper class members of society right through to the royals, you'll see neutrals dominate with some color sprinkled in here and there. Many of us appreciate and respond well to that neutral color palette because it's solid, reliable, likable, and not too loud. But when it's time for that Caribbean getaway, we tend to prefer and reach for brighter colors and patterns because they make us feel fun and carefree. And that's what we want to feel and convey while on holiday. Also, in regard to clothing, it's not just about colors and color palettes, but also materials. An all black lace or satin outfit gives a very different feel than an all black leather outfit. A red power suit is very different from a sultry red dress. Think about the fit of clothing as well. Is it conveying something conservative and modest? Is it more girl next door? Or is it giving a risque vibe? For the rest of your appearance, think about your hair. Is it sleek, immaculate, and coiffed without a hair out of place? 
or a little more carefree and go with the flow. Your makeup, how much or how little are you wearing? Where are you applying it? What colors are you using? What features are you highlighting? Are you going for a strong brow or a bold lip? Each will give a different vibe. And when it comes to accessories, do you pile them on or keep it to the minimum? Is there one piece that you always wear that people associate with you? And how do you wear your nails? And of course, fragrance. Do you have a signature scent that is unmistakably you and lets people know you were just in a room? Is there a whiff of something that will make a former flame remember you anytime they smell it? Or maybe you have a signature fragrance family. Do you always smell like some kind of flower or some kind of yummy baked goods? Overall, think about what message and what energy you want your appearance to send out and what signature things you can employ to convey that exact message. Category two that goes into creating your aura are your characteristics. I'd say your characteristics are a combination of things, the first being the vibe and behaviors you're known for. So start off by thinking about either what you're already known for or what you want to be known for. When you walk into a room, what energy do you want to bring? How do you want people to feel when they see you or even when they hear your name? If you have or want to have a warm magnetic aura, some of your characteristics should be that you smile often, that you're a good listener, that you make every effort to make everyone feel seen and welcomed and included around you. If you want a more powerful, confident aura, some of your characteristics should be that you speak with clarity, no mumbling, you keep the likes and ums to a minimum. Also being well read so that you're comfortable and sure about the topics that you speak on, that you dress smartly, that you develop that confident eye contact, posture, and a confident walk. If you want to be viewed in a more mysterious light with a mysterious aura, keep to yourself a little more than average. Listen a bit more than you speak. Let people find out things about you on their own from other people or at least share things after they're completed, not while you're planning them so that people are never really aware of your next move. Also in the characteristics category are the things you have, the things you do, and the things you choose. For example, some people are known for a prominent physical feature, like their striking eyes, or their full lips, or a signature mole or beauty mark. For others, it's a bodily feature. If there's a feature of yours that people always notice and compliment, lean into that and play it up. Other traits are more so developed, like do you have a distinct laugh, a distinct walk, or a particular manner of speech? And when it comes to things you choose, is there something you usually order to drink or to eat that will make someone instantly think of you when they hear or see that thing, even though you're not around? And in the third category are your unique factors. Your unique factors are the things that make you unique and keep you unique, especially within your community or the groups you frequent. Of course, there are always going to be other people on the planet who do what we do or who are into what we're into. But again, this is more about your own unique combination of traits and having a thing or things that are unique within your specific group. Your unique thing can be your profession. It can also be a talent or a hobby. Maybe you're a stay-at-home mom now with a group of stay-at-home mom friends, but you have a background in finance or economics. Within that group, your unique factor would be that you're the one the group turns to with finance questions or when they need ideas for their personal or family budget. Or if you and your group are very girly, but you also play or played sports or grew up with brothers who played or watched a lot of sports and you get it, you're going to be the one your friends turn to when they need a crash course in sports to keep up with or impress that new guy they met who loves sports. 
your unique thing is something that people in your community or in your circle can appreciate and turn to you for and also something that can help you retain your sense of individuality and autonomy even while thriving within a group so now that we've covered the three categories for developing your aura i want to share this final little bonus point your aura should not be confining or constricting. It's not this permanent uniform, but more like a signature or go-to. Your primary aura or energy will become such a part of you that it will still show even when you're doing things outside of that specific energy. For a more physical example, those of us who wear heels more often than not might notice that even when we wear flats or sneakers, there's still this strut in our walk because we're so accustomed to walking that way. That muscle memory is just there. And it's the same for behavior and energy. If your aura is nice and sweet most days, that doesn't mean you can't have a vixen moment, but it might just have a sweet twist to it. If you're usually a boss babe, that doesn't mean you can't indulge in soft, carefree moments, but we will all bring our own twists to these moments based on our primary aura. So your aura reflects your default or your signature things and behaviors, but it doesn't mean you can't branch out, experiment, or do something different periodically. In the Feminine Charm video, we went over a few leading ladies that I think have a very defined aura and we looked at their more mainstream auras like being womanly and fun, being classy and confident, and being soft and girly. I want to show you this in a few more examples of another group of auras like fierceness, intensity, and sass. Or unapologetically glamorous or show-stopping look at me energy as well as more brooding mysterious energy that may even have the potential to be a little dark as well now these ladies have all experimented with and rocked different looks at some point but they have that overall look or vibe that they are generally known for I hope this gave you something to work with when it comes to developing or enhancing your unique personal aura. I want to leave you with this little fill in the blank exercise on the screen to help you navigate, dig a little deeper, and discover a little bit more. And I'd love to know in the comments, how would you describe your aura? How do others usually describe you? Or what will you be working on when it comes to your aura? with so many different kinds of women in this community, I'd be very curious to know. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.